We're now going to be looking at the left hand reverse. Remember, I'm going to make a fault so you can identify the fault. Did you identify the fault? The faults were, one, as I drove past the road that I was going to reverse into, I signalled there was no need for the signal, there was no one to benefit from that. The next thing was when I pulled up at the starting point, I was much too wide from the kerb. The idea was to be about a drain's width away. When I started to reverse, I did have a good look all around, but the speed of the car was too quick. I'd lost a little bit of control of that because of the speed. I look a bit too wide than going around the corner itself. And equally, while I was reversing, most of my observation was done in the mirrors, as particularly the near side mirror. The mirrors are there so that you can judge where the kerb is, but the bulk of the looking should be through the rear window. And Annie will now show you the correct way to carry out the exercise. identify the difference. When I was approaching the corner that I was going to reverse onto, good look down it, checked my mirrors, didn't need to give an indicator for any vehicle that was coming. Remember, if we do need to give a signal, we must give that signal after the point of turn, not to confuse any other road users. Once I pulled up to the kerb, I was a great, great width distance away from the kerb. The correct distance that we want to be keeping all the way around the kerb. Looking over the left shoulder out the back window most of the time, because that's where the main danger is. Glancing in the left door mirror, using that as a tool, not as the main aid. As I said before, the main danger is out the back window. Once in the new road, again, taking effective observations all around the car. Keep the car constantly moving if possible. Obviously, if we need to stop for any vehicles, we must stop, but trying to keep the car moving at the same pace. <laughs> 